So we've got what the character thinks during a scene and what they're actually saying to get through the scene and get what they want. Scene, sort of, but really the, the sequence is still going. I think I, I could have ended the chapter yesterday, honestly. Man, I need a haircut. Oh, I've got wings. Ah. Today is Friday, September 6th, and I wrote 1,093 words today. Hey, that puts me only 609 one. words behind schedule. Right now, I am at 46.51. Come on, Wrigley, let's go see Mama. Come on, Mama. Ah, she's awake. So I have never seen him without a beard. Well, like, I can't remember. I had some stuff when we met, but it, the beard was... Your face is the best part. <laughs> it's happening. No, it's happened. It's not happening. It's gone. That's a good look. Yeah. Yeah, you think that's a good one? Yep, we're done. <laughs> Ready to walk out. All right, how much? Can we glue it all back on? Oh my god, look at all of that hair. All right, let's see how uh, Wrigley responds to the new look. Wrigley, there you are. You don't care at all, do you? This is a little more on brand. Hi, butter. Hello. Everything changes. You want it, Ruby? You want it? Gotta give me the toy. Gotta give me the toy. <laughs> you were so high off the ground. It's Friday night. I didn't really get a chance to record during the week, so this is gonna be a retrospective for how the week went. First things first, this weekend I got a haircut. Bet you can't guess which one. It had been a long time since I'd gone clean shaven and uh, Victoria was pretty curious what I looked like that way. Um, we both preferred the beard, you know, having seen it again. So it is starting to come back, hopefully pretty soon. Hi, buddy. But that was fun, fun change of pace. I've always loved going into the office and surprising coworkers with a haircut and a beard change departure that they didn't know was going to happen. That's always been a lot of fun, so. Uh, got to do the same thing for the first time for this office. On uh, Tuesday, we had to take this guy to the vet. Um, everything's fine. He's just just a little itchy boy. Probably has some food allergies, so we're gonna change his diet. Fortunately, he seems to like the new food, so let's uh, hopefully that lasts. But you didn't just come here to hear about my personal life, so let's talk about how the writing went. Monday and Tuesday were a slower start. I didn't break a thousand words on either day. On Monday, I wrote 901 words. And on Tuesday, I wrote 859 words. Now my writing goal every day is 1,052 words, which is sort of an arbitrary number, I suppose. I picked it because when I was working on the library novel, uh, I theoretically through the months of, was it June to August? The idea behind it was that if I wrote 1,052 words every day, I would have 80,000 words by the end of that three month period. Now I could have chosen a different goal and, and I could have just gone for a straight up thousand, but I think 1,056, I, I don't know, I like it. It seemed to work well for me for the days writing the library novel when it did work well for me. Those days were a little bit more difficult and I, I don't really know if there was a particular reason why. It may have just been dealing with setting Wrigley's vet visits and stuff, but you know, I really don't think it was. I'm pretty good about disconnecting from distractions when I go into writing mode, but maybe I'm not as good at that as I thought I was. Anyway, I had a much better Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Wednesday, I wrote 1,230 words. On Thursday, I wrote 1,077. And on Friday, I wrote 1,351. Now, those who've seen the other vlogs on this novel know that I started out behind. You know, my goal is 1,056 every day, but I didn't write the first day of my schedule because it was Labor Day and I didn't get a chance. Or maybe I didn't give myself enough time to do it. Six one, half dozen the other, probably. And I was still trailing a little bit behind as the week started. In fact, by the end of the day, Tuesday, I was back down to 953 words behind schedule. But then I made up the distance. Hi, buddy. Hi, my itchy boy. Itchy boy. Hi. So the funny thing is there's a heist that happens at this part of the book. 
on Monday and Tuesday was sort of setting the stage for it and kind of making sure that the stakes were established and hinting a little bit at the plan. On Wednesday through Friday, what I was writing was actual heist, you know, it taking place and, and the characters actually having to start doing the thing. And it's funny, I keep talking about how this is the novel that I'm outlining and making sure that all the details are on the index cards or the Scrivener equivalent before I start writing. Your heart is beating so fast, Bubba. You're breathing so hard. Hi, I, thank you. But this heist wasn't really laid out in much detail. So I had to figure it out as I was writing. And I actually think that worked out really well because I sort of wrote myself into a corner by writing the characters into a no-win situation, essentially. You know, I cut down the prep time and I threw obstacles at them and they had to kind of course correct and figure out what they were gonna do. And then I had to figure out a way out of the scenario. And the first instinct I had, I ended up deciding that it would have been kind of cheap. It wouldn't exactly have been a deus ex machina, but it would have been like a little bit like a, like a James Bond gadget. Kind of a, boy, it sure was convenient. We had this. Now granted, it's something that would be useful in a heist. Those are tools of the trade, but I also felt it was a magical item and I felt like that would really make the magic feel too close. You know, part of the arc of the story is there's going to be a moment when the main character observes someone casting magic for ostensibly the first time. Now, there can be magical items, those can still exist, but I think they need to be relatively rare because when they come into play in the plot in the second and third act, they need to feel like a big deal. And these crooks can't just have their hands on one for no reason. I mean, I could justify a reason for them to have it, but it just didn't feel right. And it felt too convenient, you know? It felt like there was an easy solution to the problem, so I decided not to give them that item. Instead, I had to actually think through and say, okay, this is not a heist they can execute the way they planned. So what do they do? Because they still need to do the heist. It's actually really similar to what I've heard about how the creative team for Breaking Bad would break the stories for that show. You know, they would essentially write themselves into corners and then have to figure out a smart way for Walter White to um, get himself out of them. Now, Walter White is supposed to be really smart and really quick-witted, but that's because he's actually written by a team of writers. And unlike Walter White, who has to figure things out on the fly or you know, sometimes within a couple of hours or if not, usually within the course of an episode, the writing team has like a week to do that. So they give themselves a chance to figure out the problem and then Walter comes up with it a lot faster and he's a genius. That's kind of what I did in this one. Now, I don't think the main character's idea is brilliant. It's actually kind of reckless and dumb, but it's also their best chance. In fact, it's their only chance of possibly salvaging anything from the heist. There's a chance this scene may feel a little silly, but there's a chance the whole book's gonna be a little silly, so we'll have to see. Definitely when I do some rewriting, I wanna keep an eye on this sequence and make sure it doesn't get too Clue-esque. Although, you know, people like Clue. I mean, there's a candlestick in it and they, they someone uses it in the music room to do a crime, so. You know, could be worse than being compared to Clue. Next week, I need to finish writing the heist. It's almost done, but probably I have at least another two days of writing. I also figured out something that really helps me in Scrivener is actually seeing my word count as it ascends at the bottom of the page. So when I leave off in the middle of a scene, I don't make a new scene page for my writing. You know, when I'm starting a new day, but picking up where I left off, it's the same document. I might change that. What I did today was even though, I mean, Arguably, it could have been part of the same scene as yesterday, or arguably they were separate scenes. It flows either way, so I'll have to figure it out in the, uh, in the revision process and the formatting process. But for today's purposes, I basically started a new scene card in Scrivener. And I started writing there, and at the bottom of the page, I could see my word count rising. And I found that incredibly helpful. I don't know, I feel like checking into the word count every once in a while, it almost feels like you're asking when you're done. You know, it's the same thing when I was writing in Microsoft Word, you have to click on a drop down menu, you have to select the word count, and then when it pops up, it almost feels like you're asking if you can be excused. So when you're actually seeing it rising, seeing the number go up at the bottom of the page, I don't know, I found that much more helpful. I don't remember if it played much of a role when I was writing the library novel. That's something I'd have to consider. That's kind of all I've got this week. Um, I'll be back next week. I might do the same sort of retrospective format that I did this time. Work is going to be a little busier. Um, there's someone new starting and I need to train them and 
in part all the knowledge that I was trained in and then we have to decide who's keeping which tasks and sort of dividing the work of that was two people that came into one person back into two people. Anyway, I, all that to say, I may not get a chance to do much vlogging next week, but there will definitely be a video. Um, it may just be another retrospective from Friday, but maybe this format is better. Maybe this is a useful way for me to do the videos. You know, when I sit down and I've already done all the writing and I'm just basically telling you what I did during the week, it kind of gives me a chance to establish if there's a lesson to be learned from it. You know, last week when it came to making a character strong and compelling through contrast, and this week through writing yourselves in the corners to make the characters come up with brilliant ideas, or, you know, interesting ideas. Those are things I can talk about because I've already looked back at everything I wrote during the week. So let me know in the comments if this is a format that you like. You know, do you want me to keep doing the videos more in this style or go back to the daily vlogs? If you like the video, make sure to uh, hit the like button and that's how I know that you liked it. And if you want more videos like it, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when they come out right away, hit the bell icon. That is how you know. Thanks so much for watching. I love you, Victoria.